Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight for Creme 2 News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. I'm Cody Proctor. Let's get started tonight with new info. Major crimes detectives remain busy tonight trying to figure out if a dog mauled by its mauled its owner to death. 65 year old Carol Streit was found face down in a field Wednesday near Minnehaha Park. Her dog was still alive and covered in blood. Crumb 2's Kyle Simchuk spoke to Streit's neighbors tonight and Kyle, what did they have to say to you? Well, they told me they were around this dog every day and would go next door and let it outside when Streit was at work. While I don't think her dog did this, deputies say evidence may prove otherwise. 4502 East Buckeye, there's a possible female based on a seal not moving. A search warrant obtained by Cram 2 reveals 65-year-old Carol Streit suffered extensive injuries to both arms, her pants pulled down below her waist, and her right hand appeared to be missing. I know that she's breathing. There's a dog laying next to it. has blood on it. Doesn't appear she has clothes on. Spokane County Sheriff deputies say Streit's dog exhibited protective slash aggressive behavior. The dog is a pit bull. Seems like it belongs to her. It had to be coaxed away before paramedics could get to the 65-year-old. Scratches on scene. Are they cleared in? They are, but they're not taking the dog yet. They can just hang out with us. A tag on the dog's collar helped identify Streit and led deputies to her apartment a short distance from where her body was found. Court documents show Carol Streit lived at Beau Rivage. We spoke with her next door neighbors. They didn't want to go on camera, but told us Streit adopted her dog Reggie a few months ago. Shortly after its adoption, a car hit Reggie, but the dog made a full recovery. Streit's neighbors say they let Reggie out every morning when Streit was at work, including the day she died. They say Reggie never showed any aggression toward humans, only other dogs. The sheriff's office says the only obvious wounds to Strite appear to be caused by her dog. However, additional testing is needed before this can be confirmed. The dog is being held at scraps. And Strite worked as a counselor at Spokane Regional Health. They sent us a statement saying Strite was a joy to work with and loved by her patients. Tonight, her colleagues say they're shocked and saddened by her death. In the studio, Kyle Simchuk, Krem 2 News. Kyle, thank you so much. Let's turn over now to Night Beat for a quick look at today's top stories. Spokane police searched a home last night near the area where two bodies were found in the Minnehaha neighborhood. They confirmed with us the search was in connection with the death investigation in the Minnehaha neighborhood. Spokane police say they arrested three people, but on charges not related to that investigation. Now, this all began last Friday when police found two people identified as 23-year-old Kiara Morgan Whalen and 37-year-old Colton Russell dead in the area of Cleveland Avenue and Cuba Street. Her father described his daughter as a full of life. She'd um, she'd just go out of her way to do things for people. Um, if they'd asked her to be there, she would immediately be there. And it, there was no questions or why do you need me there? Those type of things. She was just uh, one of those type of people and her friends really appreciated her for that. Hanson says the family plans to have a celebration of life sometime next month. The house where four University of Idaho students died last fall will be demolished in two weeks. The University of Idaho now owns the King Road House and says it'll be demolished December 28th. The university says it's a step forward for students and the community, but the family of Kaylee Gonzalez, one of the four students killed, is asking why demolition can't wait until after trial, though that date's still undetermined tonight. And another legal win today for Oregon State and Washington State Universities. The Washington State Supreme Court decided to rule both schools full control of the remaining assets of the Pac-12. Those assets potentially worth millions of dollars. The Supreme Court declined to review the appeal, leaving in place a lower court's ruling. That ruling says the 10 departing schools lost their right to be part of the conference's decision-making board when they announced they're joining new leagues. And that was your Creme 2 News 10 at 10, or that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just head to our website, creme.com. Well, also tonight, Spokane Public Schools notified parents at Rogers High School that a student brought a gun to school yesterday. According to school officials, staff immediately took the gun away from the student after they were made aware. The staff then quickly isolated the student from their fellow classmates. They say law enforcement responded to Rogers High. Police now investigating. And as far as we know, no one's been hurt and it's unclear what happened to the student. Now one parent 
has reached out to Krem2. Asking what SPS protocol is when a situation like this unfolds. Now, in our effort to bring you more to every story, we learned any student found with a firearm on school grounds will be expelled for at least a full year. SPS says the only people allowed on campus with firearms are military members or any federal, state or local law enforcement officer. A jury in Washington decided Rui Giuliani must pay two Georgia election workers $148 million in damages after the former mayor of New York City was found guilty of defamation. Giuliani repeatedly said he'd take the stand but never did and his attorney presented no case. A former lawyer to former President Donald Trump accused the mother and daughter election workers of exchanging electronic drives to flip votes in Georgia after the 2020 election. An investigation by Georgia's Secretary of State concluded Giuliani's allegations were substantiated. The judge ruled Giuliani liable for defamation back in August. Giuliani says he'll appeal. Let's shift gears and take a look at the forecast. We are 10 days away from December 25th, but is a white Christmas in the cards for us this year? Meteorologist Michelle Bosch joining us in the Weather Center tonight, and it's probably too soon to tell at this moment, Michelle, but what are you expecting? It, it's not really looking good. We've, we're in an El Nino year. We've had lots of warm temperatures, and what snow we've been getting has melted away pretty quickly. But Things could change in 10 days, so we'll certainly be keeping an eye on those odds. But for right now, keeping an eye on some fog that's been developing across the region. Had quarter mile freezing fog in Deer Park and Coeur d'Alene as of about 20 minutes ago was reporting quarter of a mile visibility in freezing fog, but it looks like visibilities have come back up. Just regular dense fog, not freezing in Walla Walla and the Tri City. So far, uh, Spokane is not reporting any fog as of yet, but we do expect fog to develop and dense fog in some locations overnight and early tomorrow tomorrow morning in some spots, especially out towards Moses Lake and in some of the northern valleys may not get out of the fog all day tomorrow. So it's looking rather gray for much of the inland northwest temperatures right now below freezing just about everywhere. Pullman to the mid 30s, Lewiston upper 30s, but Spokane right now 31 degrees in the 20s in Deer Park and Coeur d'Alene. Short term forecast though, despite the clouds and the fog, we do stay dry over the weekend and it looks like our next chance of precipitation would probably be in the form of rain early next week, but for the weekend, mostly cloudy sky is patchy fog and highs in the mid 30s. Well, the Creme Cares team stayed busy this week making some Christmas deliveries and today Creme 2 dropped off dozens of gifts to health care for homeless veterans. Creme 2's Laura Papetti made that delivery today and shares some of the holiday joy with us tonight. It was a perfect day, a fun day to play Santa Claus on behalf of the Creme Cares team here at the Healthcare for Homeless Veterans. We were able to bring in dozens of gifts that'll be given to veterans and their families, making the season a little bit brighter. As the folks here at this clinic tell us, the holidays, of course, can be hard for many people, and that includes uh, folks, veterans and their families struggling uh, with everything from housing to health care. And so we worked with our partners at Tree of Sharing and the folks here at the Healthcare for Homeless Veterans to supply gifts for about 70 people. Some of the family members just a few years old, ranging to veterans in their 70s. Our homeless program here takes care of a lot of different things as far as their basic needs. But this time of year, a lot we got homeless veterans. They don't get those things to give out to others or for themselves. So how can you, if you're a grown up uh, veteran, how can you explain to your kids that you can't get that? So what this does is help fill that void a little. All of us at Creme 2 and the Creme Cares team were able to do what we did today, bring all these gifts because of a grant that we wrote uh, with the Tegna Foundation. Tegna, being our parent company, has a foundation and we're able to write grants and they approved it so that we could bring gifts to, again, family members and veterans here in our area. And we're so grateful. We're grateful for the help of Tria Sharing too to make it happen. And of course, we're grateful for everyone here at the Healthcare for Homeless Veterans Center. Reporting in downtown Spokane, Laura Papetti, Creme 2 News. Laura, thank you so much. And of course, by the way, people can make donations to the health care to homeless veterans throughout the year. And that was your Creme 2 News 10 at 10, where you get more news in less time.